This is the Code Graph lesson on programming environments. My name is Steve Baskoff, and I'm with the Digital Scholarship and Communications Office of the Vanderbilt Heard Libraries. If you're not familiar with what Code Graph is, I recommend that you go to the Code Graph landing page, which is at vanderbilt.lt slash Code Graph, and you can watch introductory videos and learn more about the program there. I'm going to start today's lesson with talking about what is an environment. It's a little bit murky if you do some web searching on environment. Uh, so this is not a very strict definition, but I'll just say that I consider a coding environment to include the value of any variables that you define and also functions that are available to your code as well as uh, general knowledge about what's going on on your computer, like what the uh, current working file directory is and other things like that. Um, I'm going to talk right now about the value of defined variables and the other things will come up later. So the simplest way to uh, access the environment is through using the shell, which we talked about in an earlier lesson. So I'm gonna illustrate this with two examples, one accessing Python and the other accessing R. So I will just uh, bring up the console for my Mac, which is called Terminal. And you'll see that I am at in the bash shell which is the default Linux shell. And I really don't care about doing Linux right now. What I want to do is Python. So I will type Python to start up the Python shell. I can see that there are three greater than signs here, which means that I am in the Python 3.71 shell. So I'm going to do a very simple statement. I'm just simply going to say x equals 5. And we'll talk more about this later, but the equal sign basically is an assignment operator. It means take the number 5 and put it in the variable named x. And so I can just execute this immediately. Now, I don't see anything right now because uh, all I did was put the number 5 into the variable x. When you're in the interactive shell mode, you can see the values of variables just by typing the name of the variable and hitting enter, and it tells me that it's five. I can also use the um, statement print x, and that will also show me what is in five. So let's try assigning something else to a variable. Let's have a, a more complicated variable name. Let's call it name. And let's assign the value Steve to that variable. So again, if I type in the name of the variable and hit enter, I can see what its value is. So the question is, uh, you know, how does the computer remember what's in these variables? And the answer is it's keeping track of the, of the values or the storage locations uh, with these different names. And it essentially doesn't forget what is in those things. So even though I've now performed a different statement, if I type x again, it still remembers that the value of x is equal to 5. So one of the problems with using the interactive shell is it's not very apparent to you what is in the environment, like what the values are of different variables. You can ask and have it show you, but there's no way to like look on the screen and see what those values are. All right, let's go ahead and get out of the Python shell by hitting Control Z. And now let's go into the R shell, which I've installed on my computer just by typing R. So now I can see I have another message here telling me that I'm in R version 3.6.1. And the prompt in the R shell is a single greater than um, symbol. So I can do a similar thing to what I did before, which is um, to assign a value to a variable. So let's um, have a variable, let's call it n this time. And in R, the assignment operator that's typically used is 
a lesson sign and a dash, which makes sort of a leftward pointing arrow. So let's put the value 19 into n. Okay, so once again, I don't see anything happening here, but if I type the letter n, it will show me that the value of n is 19. So I can also assign a, a string of characters to a variable. So let's call this one my name. And let's assign Boskoff to that. Now if I type my name, I can see that that has been stored in the environment. And again, if I go back and ask what n is, it remembers that n is 19. So I will hit Control Z. I'm now out of the interactive R shell and back into the bash shell, I can see because of this prompt here. So in summary, the shell uh, basically keeps track of what's going on through the environment, but the interactive shell does not give us a very uh, easy way to see what is going on in the environment.